This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Benzi. I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. Republican presidential nominee and former President Donald Trump made headlines this week during a policy roundtable in Smithton, Pennsylvania. During the roundtable, Trump brought up Deere's announcement earlier this year that it would be moving some production to Mexico by 2026. He said, quote, I'm just notifying John Deere right now. If you do that, we're putting a 200 percent tariff on everything that you want to sell into the United States. There's one major roadblock to that threat, however, the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement signed by Trump when he was president in January 2020, which replaced the North American Free Trade Agreement. USMCA prohibits the leverage of tariffs on a range of goods, allowing companies to manufacture in Mexico and Canada and export back to the U.S. without high costs. When the USMCA was signed four years ago, it was reported that nearly 30 percent of all equipment produced in the U.S. is intended for export, and Canada and Mexico are the first and second largest export markets for both U.S. construction and ag equipment. Since the creation of NAFTA two decades ago, the equipment manufacturing industry has benefited greatly from duty-free access to the industry's largest two export markets, Canada and Mexico. Now here's Noah Newman with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thanks a lot, Kim. So no doubt one of the biggest precision stories of the summer was the announcement of a partnership between New Holland and Blue White. West Coast New Holland dealers can now sell, service, and distribute Blue White aftermarket autonomy kits. I recently had the chance to catch up with Elon Asher. He's Blue White's chief business officer. And I asked him about the significance of this partnership with a major OEM. Here's what he said. We did start to work individually with a couple of dealers in the West Coast, the New Holland and John Deere dealership, but really here working, collaborating, and partnering with the OEM give a much broader opportunity. Uh, first, to do a better integration to the product. Better integration means better performance, um, faster deployment time at more competitive cost. and also collaborating on the commercial front, working really closely with the dealer and the New Holland uh, folks that assist on the training, on the implementation, using also lessons learned from other products on how to basically bring this digital and autonomous revolution for agriculture. This is very new for everyone, um, so definitely better to collaborate and we're very happy on this partnership with uh, New Holland. They have amazing team uh, both in the headquarters and working in the fields um, that really looking forward on you know how to bring these amazing technologies uh, to every grower starting with the west coast but then looking at at a broader scale. New Holland and Blue White are also exploring future possibilities for factory installed solutions and to check out more about the Blue White Autonomy Kit, head to the Farm Innovations YouTube channel or precisionfarmingdealer.com. In the Technology Corner, I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Noah. The Federal Reserve lowered its discount rate by half a percentage point on September 18th to 4.75 to 5%, the first cut since 2020. The cut was more aggressive than investors had been expecting a week ago, reports the Wall Street Journal. For all the attention on the Fed, upcoming economic data could still play the biggest role in shaping markets. Stocks have historically performed well in the 12 months after the Fed has started to cut rates, unless the economy has entered a recession during that period, the Wall Street Journal reported. Greg Roberg, vice president of sales at AgDirect, says he was pleasantly surprised by the decision. Back in August, he had told on the record he was expecting a 0.25 percentage point drop to be announced following the Fed's September meeting. He said this will be good news for producers as operating rates will likely come down, saving them interest and equipment dealers should see lower fixed rates by finance companies to offer to their customers. With the decrease in commodity prices this year, the ag industry needed some positive news and we received some today. A September 18th Farm Equipment Insider text poll indicates over half of surveyed dealers say the news will have a positive impact on year-end 2024 farm equipment purchases. Don Van Howling, owner of the Iowa-based Deere dealership group Van Wall Equipment, sees the news as positive for the industry. 
He said it will obviously help as it will reduce every payment on every new contract, but it will have more of an effect psychologically. We have been offering low interest rates on many key items already, so it will just help us lower them some more. It will help us as dealers the most as it will reduce our floor plan interest costs. Harvest season is underway with 13% of corn and 10% of soybean harvested, according to the September 23rd USDA Crop Progress Report. Last week, the Watershed Protection Committee of Racine County hosted its summer field day in Rochester, Wisconsin, featuring presentations from no-tailers Jim Studi and Rick Bieber. Bieber made the trip out from North Central South Dakota, where he's been no-tailing for over four decades. One of the most interesting parts of his presentation was when he talked about how he measures yield and why he's not even a big fan of the world to begin with. There's too many times the word yield is, is used to scare farmers into purchasing stuff. You're going to lose yield or you get greater yield. You get all this stuff. And yield is what pays the bills basically at the bank. You have to have so much yield against so many expenses to make it work. I understand all that. But on our farm, and I don't know what made me start this 30 some years ago, we started measuring things about bushels per inch of water that God gives us. We have no irrigation. So when we started this whole thing back in the 80s, we were at three and a half bushels of corn for every inch of water that we got. Today, with our system functioning the way it is, we're between between 10 and 12 for the last five years, pretty consistently there. And before that, we were at eight. The numbers just continue to rise for us, but it looks like we're gonna stabilize between 10 or 12 bushels per inch of water that we receive, which means we've increased by three to 400% our water use efficiency. And if we can give up the nutrients and maintain yield after it comes back three or four years later, we've actually increased our nutrient use efficiency by thousands percent. USDA's Economic Research Service forecasts inflation-adjusted U.S. net cash farm income will decrease by $16.3 billion, or 9.6%, to $154.1 billion in 2024. This would come after a decrease of $52.9 billion, or 23.7%, in 2023, from an all-time high of $223.3 billion in 2022. U.S. net farm income is forecast to decrease by $10.2 billion, or 6.8%, to $140 billion in 2024. This reduction follows a drop of $43.3 billion in NFI in 2023, from an all-time high of $193.5 billion in 2022 after adjusting for inflation. Despite these declines, if forecasts are realized, NCFI and NFI would stay above their respective 2004 to 23 averages in 2024. Underlying these forecasts, cash receipts for farm commodities are projected to fall by $23.3 billion, or 4.3%, to $516.5 billion in 2024, primarily because of lower crop receipts. However, a $16.2 billion reduction in production expenses is expected to moderate the overall decline. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lesternmedia.com. Until next time, I'm Kim Schmidt. Thanks for joining us.